Um, so, you know, Amjad provided this slide from Amazon that really shows how big Amazon is internationally. Um, uh, 300 million, and this is, this is not the most updated slide, but 300 million plus worldwide active customer accounts, 150 million plus paid prime members, uh, 700 plus million unique monthly visitors, uh, inter just internationally. Uh, this is, uh, they've got a lot of reach and you, you know, it's really um, not that, not as difficult as you might think to expand internationally. Is it gonna take time? Is it gonna take diligence? Uh, yes. But Amazon, you know, has been so dominant in the U.S. that they're really putting their throttle on the international presence. Um, you know, uh, as I mentioned, you know, places like Korea and and uh, uh, Malaysia and stuff like that. They're not the dominant player over there, but they're moving in that direction in a lot of countries, becoming more and more prominent. Why not be, you know, able to expand internationally, reach the global customer and you know, be early on, you know, be one of the, the leaders in, in your category to, to expand into as many marketplaces as makes sense. So you can, you know, when, you're, when your competitors eventually catch up, you're, you've got more reviews, you've got better ranking and so forth. Anything to add to this slide? A hundred percent. You hit the nail on the head there. Um, it, it, Amazon's expanding globally. Uh, like that's what the agenda is, right? Um, and it's there's really no better time for your any seller to partner with Amazon and with uh, Prime Guidance to launch internationally and get in early. So that way, when it gets saturated like the U.S. does, you have your ranking, you have your reviews, you're already established. So uh, that's a great point. So, you know, there's a lot to choose from, right? Where do you start? Um, this is the list of Amazon International Marketplaces, and um, we'll, we'll talk on another slide about where we start. But as you can see, there's a number of opportunities here. You've got the Americas, you've got Europe, you've got Asia Pacific, Middle East, each with their own countries and own you know, dynamics, customer demand, et cetera. Um, it can be a little overwhelming, but we'll walk through on some of the future slides what we think is the right approach. So... Let's talk about when's the right time to expand in international markets. This is, this is a tricky one and it's not a one size fits all. But I would say that my recommendation is that you should be 80 to 90% on top of the Amazon US business. Meaning you've squeezed out a lot of the business. You're a top performing seller. You're doing all the right things. Like for example, if you're not taking advantage of the different types of ad campaigns. You're not, you don't have videos on your listings. You don't have a plus content on all your listings. You don't have uh, a storefront. You shouldn't be expanding internationally. You should be owning those things, doing really good job. And there's a couple of reasons why. One, Amazon US is so big, so dominant. If your team is spending time and energy, they're going to have more bang for their buck. There's a higher ROI, in my opinion, to focus on that. But there's also a benefit in you getting your listings in tip top shape so that you can essentially do a lift and shift and have really well optimized products that you can expand into the international markets and, and spend your time making tweaks based on the language or specific differences in how those consumers are shopping, but not having to now find your products in 12 countries and all of them need to be re-optimized and they're all in bad shape. And now your team's spending a ton of time making all of those optimizations 12 times instead of one. Um, that's the, re the main True. reason why I think it, 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 you should kind of delay until you're, you're ready to expand internationally. However, that being said, you've got a plan for it. Everybody <clears throat> should have a, a pin on the map, essentially, of when, I, when do I think I'm going to get to the point of international expansion? And then, you know, what, what order are we going to expand? How fast do I think I can you know, expand in these markets. What are the things I need to do systemically? What are the things I need to do uh, operationally? What are the considerations I have to put in place that are unique uh, aspects like taxing uh, and so forth that you, you plan for? Because it, it can take months to roll out an international expansion strategy. It doesn't, it's not something you want to do spur of the moment. I'm just, and Steve, I want to throw in if, 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 you feel like this is an expansion that you uh, should be planning for for the next six to 12 to 18 months. And you're actively right now, you know, 
uh, either generating or paying someone for to generate content for you, um, call Prime Guidance because it's 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 more than we can handle on this webinar. But there's a lot of things that you can do content wise. I mean, Amazon One makes it incredibly easy to um, get your listing, like you said, lifted and shifted over to other marketplaces. But when they shift the A plus content for you, they will do a really good translation shift for you. But the images don't trans. If you have you know English text there, if you're paying to have that stuff you know created now, go ahead and pay just a little bit more to have that same person do the translation now and save that content, get organized, and get it ready to go. It's just like having a a, a photographer shoot a product, right? The, if you exactly. go back and add that photo- or ask that photographer to add another image, they have to set up that whole, you know, um, photo shoot again to shoot one image uh, angle. Have that added right out of the gate. It's going to be way more cost efficient for you. And, and that's the kind of forward thinking we want every client to be looking at is what are the things I'm going to need to put in place? How can I make sure that I'm preparing myself along the way? This is an easier transition for your, for your, your team. It's not something that is, you know, an, an unsurmountable effort that, you know, is difficult for them to, uh, to, to launch into. Sure. Anything else as far as timing, guys? Well, I mean, not, not, I mean, you've already touched on, you know, you referred to the 80, sort of the 80%. I guess there's all kinds of ways to look at that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, one certainly is market share, you know, in any channel, whether it's you know Amazon or any other channel, any market, um, you know most brands are you know uh, developed. Most products are developed and priced for a particular market segment in mm-hmm. mind. And so you know if you decide, well, you know where I'm best is a premium product, you know you're never going to get the whole market. And so you need to understand your share of market against the direct competitors for whatever that premium product category is. At some point, you're not going to increase that market share. You're just never, you're, nobody owns the whole market. So, I mean, that's certainly one thing uh, that I would look at is, you know, it's not only the, you know, do I check the boxes? I've got my alternate images and my A+, plus, et cetera, et cetera. But have I even, you know, really penetrated the market? Is there more growth opportunity for me? Uh, that's one thing I would, you know, look at. The other is, um, you know, working with a client for three years now where we literally started with two products. One, they were not even selling. Uh, They, you know, sold it wholesale and these third-party sellers were selling it. And we spent, you know, a good year using, you know, uh, Amazon provided automated pricing rules to be able to win back the buy box from these third party sellers that, you know, were there before us. And I mean, that was almost a year's worth just to get the buy box back. And then we've grown it, you know, 200%. Since then, the other product, uh, the client was marketing, but not terribly effectively. We've really targeted that for new customer acquisition. And then we've continued to build and bundle and build and bundle. And now we're kind of launching what, we, what they consider their tertiary products. So it, you know, in that case, we've got some products and brands where we're pretty well penetrated and optimized. And now we're introducing four new brands and new categories. Uh, and you know, we maybe had take us another year or 18 months to get those kind of fully ramped and optimized. Um, and at that point, we will have introduced our whole catalog on mm-hmm. Amazon. So I just, you know, just want to make the point that, um, you know, it's, it's, a lot, it's a lot more than sort of, again, are your listings ideal? But, you know, do you even have all your products on Amazon? There's just a lot of factors to keep in mind before you say, you know what, you know, I've, I've done everything or pretty much as much as I can on the dot com. Now it's the right time if I go to Europe or Canada or whatever, it's probably going to be, you know, a better use of my incremental resources. Always, always uh, multiple points to every decision, right? So that's one of the things that if you're trying to brainstorm when's the right time, have a conversation with your prime guidance consultant and let's talk through it. I'd be happy to join a call or brainstorm and 
and let's let's kind of you know, let's architect the roadmap and let's push ourselves to expand as fast as possible, but not leap over things that are really critical. So if you may not be moving fast enough and we need to figure out what's it going to take? Why are we not having our full assortment? Why are we not having all of our products optimized? Why don't we have a storefront that's in great shape? Why don't we have all the advertising types, uh, you know, well utilized? Um, and let's let's accelerate that. But we've got to make sure that international expansion is not overlooked. Uh, I, I it, it does. Um, it do, It's problematic, in my opinion, if you're talking about international for a few years and still haven't implemented it. Um, there's probably something we got to do to speed things up. Yeah, I'm curious. Question for Amjad. You know, obviously, Prime Guidance. We work with plenty of clients, many clients, and many of them internationally. But I'm sure Amjad has worked with a lot more clients in Europe than we have. And I'm curious, what is the more common approach? Is it sort of you know, tip a tip a, you know, I'm gonna dip my toe in the water and I'm gonna pick what I think is the most attractive country, let's just say in Europe, and I'm gonna get acclimated to doing international in that country, or is it more common to say, you know, it's just gonna be a whole lot more efficient to take on the EU at once and let's do that. Um, well, what's common is the tip my toes uh, strategy, but what's effective is the second strategy that you mentioned. Uh, it's just not a fair test for anything to be like, I'm going to send just these two products to just this one marketplace. Um, that's not it's just not a fair test, right? Let's just test out your whatever you got on Amazon. You know, I have a team that's going to build out and translate all of the listings for you. You don't have to do anything. Um, let's just upload all those listings. Let's get them in the fulfillment centers and let's launch across all eight countries. Then let's take a look at the data for a couple of months and see where we're doing well, where we're not doing well, and reevaluate. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> that's the answer. So, even I certainly get your point about let's not just cherry pick a couple items, but it sounds like you're saying even if the client says, the seller says, yeah, yeah, well, you know, we'll do the same product catalog. You're still saying, don't just take, yeah, don't just take all the products and put it in one country, put it in the eight from the start. Yeah, well, so how it works is when you're shipping, right? You, you, what do you get your account? You get your VATs. Now, you definitely, definitely want your German and your UK VAT because between those two marketplaces, 80 to 85% of the traffic from Europe as a continent is going to come from these two countries. Now, since Brexit, right, it used to just be get your UK, but now we have to get an EU VAT. So Germany has the most traffic. Let's go there. From Germany, you can at least sell to multiple different European countries, um, but it makes it so much easier for you as a seller to have all your VATs in all your countries. You get a discount once you do it through Amazon anyways. Uh, the sixth and seventh are for free. Um, and you ship into Germany, you ship into UK, then Germany, and then Amazon through the Pan EU FBA program will distribute your products across different countries, different fulfillment centers. So there's really not much you have to do as a seller aside from get your products into the UK and Germany. That's great. That's good to know because I'm sure that there's some people start to think about oh, but the more countries, the more translations I've got to do, and you know the the different currencies. Well, I guess the EU it's different now, but you know, that there are still very, uh, a number of very country specific requirements. So it's good to know that in general, it's still more effective to, yeah. uh, to, to go all in. Okay, great. 